I'm going to help you enhance your violin sound in less than 10 minutes. First of all, make sure that your violin equipment is in working order, friends. So you wanna make sure that you have a clean bow rehair. You wanna have all the good rosin on that bow rehair. You wanna have fresh strings so that you can get the best sound out of your instrument. Now, there are different types of strings out there. There are some bright strings and dark strings. And depending on what kind of instrument you have, what kind of wood your violin is made out of, you typically want to find a string that is complementary to the wood of your instruments. Usually in my experience that low tension strings happen to be on the darker side. Uh, for instance, like a parastro obligato could be on the darker side. And if you want like a dark sound on your instrument that is easy to blend with, maybe in an ensemble, in an orchestra, that could be something that you want to consider. Or if you want something that can pierce through the orchestra like a soloist, then you want something that has a little bit higher tension string. So talk to a luthier about what strings will best fit your instrument. You know, each company out there will be convincing you to buy different types of strings, but the best string, the most expensive string, may not necessarily be the best string for your instrument and for your style of playing. So it's always good to kind of compare and contrast the different types of strings out there for your instrument. Now in that same area of the string world, we have rosins. Now something that I love to talk about on this channel is rosins. And rosins come in different sound colors. You have the soft rosins and you have the dark rosins. The darker rosins typically have a more aggressive feel to the string. If you want something with a little bit more punch, then a dark rosin will be a good fit. You want something that can grip the string really nicely. And typically in my experience, the, the dark rosins fit really well on low tension strings because you want to be able to get a good, clear, concise sound. When it comes to high tension strings, I tend to gravitate towards something in between, like uh, something that can give me a little bit of grip, but also is soft in nature. And if you're looking for something that has a soft feel alongside maybe a high tension string, then you might want to consider that too. So it all depends on what kind of instrument you're playing on, what, what's your playing style, and whether you're a classical musician or a fiddler. That also plays into a big account as to what kind of sound you're looking for and trying to enhance your sound. If you're a fiddler, you're probably going to get a lot of rigid and scratch your sound that you dig into the string, probably a darker rosin will fit for you. Or if you're looking for something within an orchestra setting, then a soft rosin might be the best fit for you. Now, having said all of that, we have to talk about the posture. In a recent video, I talked about how important posture is and body language, so I'm gonna leave a link right up here for you to take a look at after this video. I always tell my students that a confident posture will give a confident sound. Because when someone stands confidently, you're kind of standing up straight, you have soft shoulders, and your soft knees, you're not like locking in your knees while you're standing up. And you are definitely going to get a lot of confident sound if you are standing up confident. You just, your frame of mind is different. So it's a little tweak that can really help improve your sound just by standing up straighter, believe it or not. It's as simple as that. A lot of people that I teach, um, some adult beginners as well, they have a tendency to kind of let the violin slide down the shoulder. I don't want you to do that. I want you to have a good, uh, you know, good fit on the collarbone and the shoulder, both at the same time, so that you can kind of lift your lift your abdomen up a little bit, you know, use your core strength to lift your body up so that you can have a good positive sound. Once you have an established posture, you know, your body is relaxed, it's soft, then I want you to put your bow on a string and I want you to pull the string. Now, one important element I want to talk about that I've talked about in my previous videos, my subscribers have probably heard me say this time and time again, is to pull the string, never press it down on the string. And if you're new to this channel, welcome to the Violin Family, really appreciate you being here. So I want you to really, uh, don't press down into the string, and I want you to really see if you can grip the string to get a good sound. Now, something that I've seen recently is you, I ask my students to pull the string, but they still get a scratchy sound. That is because you are probably not using a quick bow after the release of the grip. So what do I mean by that? So if I'm gripping the string, I wanna go right away. You know, if you're a beginner. So if you are an advanced level violinist, you're gonna use a little bit more advanced technique you can still have a nice soft introduction to the beginning of the note 
but for our purpose for beginners and intermediate i always emphasize the setting of the string gripping the string pulling the string so I'm pulling the bow and pulling the string that's what i meant so that is something that cannot be overlooked friends if you are really trying then you will have a good sound. Now I'm gonna steal a technique that I see in my viola colleagues that work for them beautifully, but I believe it can also be applied in violin playing. Now you don't wanna to do too much of this technique because it'll definitely uh, make your sound more scratchier, more scratchier, more scratchy, that's what I meant. It'll make your sound more scratchy as a result. So you want to use this technique with a grain of salt, depending on your playing style. So for me, I am six foot one. It may not seem like it through the YouTube video, but I happen to have very long arms and I am very tall. So for me to have a violin that's really small and then you can see that by my, my arm, it goes all the way out beyond the scroll. So I am always trying to find ways to maximize and enhance my sound without having to try so hard or with tension. So what I like to do, you might've seen this already, I don't have my elbow up in general. You see through this video already that my elbow kind of collapses a little bit, but most importantly, my shoulder collapses, this right shoulder over here. Now, the reason for that is because you will automatically have louder sound as a result of putting your shoulder down. Your shoulder down and your elbow. Now, I don't want you to go all the way down right? You want to make sure you have a bit of this curvature that's natural to the arm and you're going to use your arm weight to pull the string. And if you do it correctly and alongside the other points that I made earlier, you're going to enhance the volume of your sound. Now, what about overtones? We haven't talked about overtones much yet. And let's say I have a third finger on A. You can see that already. If I have my violin right arm up here, you might have experienced this kind of sound. It's very icy Ponticello type of sound. That is because you just don't have enough grip on the string. So in combination with the finger versus the arm on the right, you can kind of hear that echo already. Those overtones are ringing. Part of that is the string and a lot of that is the violin. However, with the right combination of string, rosin, bow hold, bow grip, arm, shoulder, all that stuff, you will enhance your sound naturally. And I always like to say little tweaks lead to high peaks and these little tweaks will help definitely enhance your sound. Another really important tool when it comes to having a bigger sound, louder volume, more overtones is to relax your body. Now it goes back to the whole posture thing. If you're not focusing about the relaxation of your body, then you will have a tough time getting uh, a louder sound because whatever you give into the violin, the violin will respond to you. I'm a firm believer in that. And sometimes violins have personalities. So it's for me, I, I think about that all the time when I'm, when I'm approaching my violin, in a sweet way, then the violin will treat the sound sweetly, if that makes any sense. So if I'm relaxed, my sound will be pure and beautiful and silky and smooth. But if I'm pressing in, then I'm going to get exactly what I'm putting into the violin. And that's what I wanna leave with you today. If you are ever struggling with sound, if you're struggling with intonation, whatever you put into your instrument, you will get out. And you know, if you're practicing 10 minutes a day, you know, you're gonna get 10 minutes worth of sound out of your violin, if that makes any sense. So I like to encourage you to check out these other videos to help you stay on track with your violin practice and violin playing.